All right, guys, what's going on? Kosho here at the Lion's Den. Continuation of the collaboration with Anthony Deal, pro strongman, now a bodybuilder, kind of has done it all. He's a coach uh, for strength and conditioning and also nutrition. But in this video, I kind of want to talk more about the nutritional side of things. Um, I'm actually going through the same course I think you had taken, the PN1, so Precision yeah. Nutrition uh, coach, Coaching course, which I'm really enjoying. I'm almost finished it. And I like a lot of their principles and just everything else I've kind of learned along the way. You know, I think him and I click a lot with our methodology, our coaching. Uh, so I just wanted him to share with you guys some tips uh, when it comes to nutrition, okay? Because that's a huge part uh, when we look at everything as a whole is, is that nutritional aspect. So what's maybe some things that you would recommend to people or things that you see or, or coaching, anything like that when it comes to nutrition in general? Yeah, so um, there's a lot we could talk about here. So I'm a weight class athlete, so I've always dealt with a lot of athletes who need to eat in a certain way and make a weight class, right? So it's a little bit different if you're bulk if you're a big guy over here you know you can eat whatever you want uh, get stronger but so the thing that I've always tried to solve is how to stay lean and work towards a weight class while getting stronger and when you do that I think nutrient timing is pretty critical so a couple principles that I follow are um, and these are some high overarching principles right if you don't have a coach and you're trying to do this on your own let me just encourage you with something never um, never make a change to your plan after one week of data okay so if you're if you've got your macro set you're training hard and you jump on the scale and you're three pounds heavier a lot of times what gets people spinning their wheels is they're going to change everything uh oh shit, I, I gained weight so i need to drop this i need to do this i need to add in fasting cardio blah 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 uh, when the reality is there's so many things that can go into weight fluctuations so stay on a consistent course or path for several weeks to get a trend. When you see a trend emerge and then you need to take an action, either increase calories or decrease calories, whatever the case might be, second principle is never implement more than one solution at a time. You don't wanna do the kitchen sink approach. So if you need to drop some weight, um, cutting your calories by 700 calories and adding in three days of fasted cardio and doing all these things, it, it will probably work, but then now you're committed to these lifestyle changes that maybe you only needed one of those things to work. Um, and so I see this all the time with people is they will, they will just spin their wheels for years because they don't take time to respond to what's happening. They just react. They freak out, knee-jerk react. Um, and the reason I'm talking high level on those principles first is because we can talk about macros all day long. We can talk about nutrient timing, which we can get into. Um, but at the end of the day, it's those overarching principles that are going to guide you to help make long-term progress. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, often at times people overcomplicate things when the solution sometimes is, is way more simple. And what it comes down to, I think, in nutrition that's big is adherence. And mm. if we try to have all these options and it makes the adherence harder, then that is no longer the best option. So. Uh, for me, it's always, okay, we have this goal. How can we make it as simple as possible and keep uh, either myself or the people that I work with as here into the plan as we can? And that's kind of where we have that game of just, you know, kind of finding where's that happy medium yeah. uh, to make something happen. It's, it's interesting because I coach a lot of different demographics, right? So if I'm coaching somebody who's prepping for a bodybuilding show, well, they don't have an option. They're in a different spot in life. Like, you just need to execute the plan because this is your goal and, you know, your comfort. You signed up for something uncomfortable, so get used to it. If I'm coaching a soccer mom who wants to lose 20 pounds, um, I'm not going to, you know, add in all of these restrictions and make it miserable to adhere to. Because like you said, if you can't adhere to it, you're not going to follow it. Um, I think it's really important too. Whenever I have a new client who doesn't come from an athletic background, I always focus on adding in positive behaviors first before we restrict anything. Yep. So oftentimes people aren't eating enough protein. They're not just moving enough. I mean, walking is so underrated. Just Go for a 10, 20, 30 minute walk every day in the sunlight. It's gonna help you a ton. Um, getting enough water. So we focus in on layering in habits first, positive things, and people like choices too, because they like to feel like they're part of the process. So when I review somebody where they're at, their current state, and maybe they're not eating enough protein or veggies or drinking water or moving, I'll say, hey, here's all the things that we need to tackle, we need to address. We're not gonna do it all at once. Mm -hmm. Which one do you wanna tackle first? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it gives them a choice. It feels like they're a participant in this process. Okay, cool, you chose water. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to drink at least two liters to a gallon of water a day. Can you commit to that this week? Okay, we get to a couple weeks where they're done with that and they've nailed that habit down. Now we're gonna move on to the next habit. Mm -hmm. And we just stack habits over time. 
then once they built these new habits, oftentimes what you'll see is they feel better, they look better, their sleep is better. And a lot of times they've lost weight by sheer displacement, right? When you start eating more protein, maybe they're just naturally eating less junk. Mm -hmm. But once we've built all the good habits, then we can start talking about, you know, maybe, hey, you're having Ben and Jerry's every night. Can we, can we drop that down to three nights? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And we slowly, and you know, if you throw everything at them at once, you know, some people, people do this all the time, New Year's resolutions. I'm getting fit, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. They join a gym, they start doing cardio five days a week, they go to Orange Theory, they're lifting weights, and they realize like three to four weeks in, this is unsustainable, mm -hmm. and they have that perfectionist mentality, so then they just quit. Yeah. So I like to take the slow, methodical approach of like stack habits and slowly change the lifestyle. And the way I judge my success personally with clients is um, if they do what I say, they're gonna get results because I may mean, be doing this for a long time and know how to get results. I judge my success on, I'll check in with them, where are they at six months after they stop working with me? Mm. If they're still doing well on their own, then I've taught them the principles that they need to follow mm -hmm. and, and we're good. So that's kind of how I approach it from a general client, general population client. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing you talked about is building proper habits. And, and when you find that people are implementing these, these more positive habits or habits that are just more towards the goals they have, you, you do see what you had said happen, but you also, sometimes just naturally bad habits just fall off because they're just developing a better lifestyle in general and it kind of clears up a lot of the problems. Uh, so I think everything that you had just said just really is a great way of setting the foundation to build proper uh, nutrition habits that are better to suit your goals. And you did say something earlier that I want to dive maybe a little bit more into is uh, nutrient timing. Yeah, so, I started I started yeah, to talk yeah. about that and I realized I wanted to cover some high level things first exactly. before yeah, we yeah. got in the weeds. Which we can good. totally get in the weeds. Yeah, so maybe just give us a couple uh, core foundational principles when it comes to nutrient timing that you have found work the best for the clients that you work with and even yourself. Yeah, so for myself and a lot of clients I work with, I'm a 105K, I compete at 231.4 is the cutoff, right? But I walk around 255, 260, so you know, as you're coming into a competition, you gotta start dieting down, but you're trying to get stronger. And so those two, seem, those two things seem antithetical, uh, but they're not. In fact, even for my gen pop clients, when they wanna cut, we focus on strength. Because um, you need to give your body a reason to hang on to the muscle that you have. So we increase the protein, so uh, when I'm in a cut, I will typically take my protein from 1.2 grams all the way to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. So protein goes high and I'm lifting heavy, getting ready to peak for a contest. And that's signaling to my body, even though I'm in a caloric deficit, he needs this muscle because he's using it. Um, and the other thing I'll do is, you know, for, for most people, hit your protein intake and then scale your carbs and fats to your liking. But for a strength athlete, specifically cutting, trying to keep strength, there's some things that we do. The pre and the post-workout meal are the most important. There's a lot of wiggle room in the others, but the pre and post-workout are important. Um, I like to limit fats to trace or no fats, carbs and protein. So I'll do a carbs and protein in a four to one, three to one carb to protein ratio, pre and post. Now why is that? Fat is not bad, so don't take that away from this video. You need fat but fat slows your digestion down. And if you're in a deficit, we want you to have the energy that your body needs when it needs it. So when you're training. So we wanna eliminate fats from our diet um, so that you eat that pre-workout meal, the carbohydrates are there to drive the energy during a hard training session. Same thing, you eat your post-workout meal and you kickstart recovery right away. Remember, you're in a deficit, so we wanna start that recovery process right away. So those are, that's the reason why I limit the fats um, pre and post and, and keep on my training days, I keep fat away. Guys, I can take fat a little bit lower. Um, females, I like to keep fat slightly higher just because um, fat and cholesterol is kind of the mother of all hormone production. So the last thing I wanna do with my ladies is, is drive them too far in a deficit and create hormonal problems. So um, I, just a rule of thumb, and you can scale it a little bit, but for females, the lowest I'll ever take them is 20% of their daily calories will come from fat on a training day. Mm -hmm. For guys, I'll go all the way down to 15%, sometimes even a little lower, um, and drive carbohydrates, but that's just something I've learned over time. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I feel like I need to get someone on the channel who just is the complete opposite of what I believe, just because then it'll probably be a little bit more entertaining. Because if you guys are watching this video uh, and you've been following me for some time, uh, he's just reiterating a lot of points that I personally have been saying to you guys, which is good, okay? It means we're on the same page with things, he understands you know, as a coach, what is necessary to get the athlete to where he needs to be, even himself. Uh, so I, I love all that stuff. Uh, and I think 
kind of say the foundational principles, we, we gave you those, then we got into some nutrient timing things, which are very important, especially pre post training, if you're a strength sport athlete, right? High protein, utilizing those carbs properly, fat, just getting in what you need for fat to kind of maintain, you know, regular homeostasis of the body, you know, without putting yourself too low, and obviously excess fat is just kind of unnecessary for the goals that we have. Um, the last thing that we talked about off camera was being dogmatic, and I think that's a really good point that I want you to stress to close this video out uh, when it comes to, you know, just training in general or nutrition, all right? So hit it. Yeah, so a lot of times um, the reason people reach out to a coach is because if you just Google how to lose weight and gain strength, you're going to get a million different opinions on how to do it. And uh, for somebody who doesn't know, it's confusing, it's overwhelming, and you try a method or two, it works or it doesn't work. And then you see people on Instagram selling the keto diet. That's the way to go. You have to do this. This is the only way to live. You know, carbs will kill you. And then there's the other, there's the plant-based side. And then, and, and I'm very dogmatic in that you really shouldn't be dogmatic about nutrition. Everything has a context. It's just a tool in a toolbox. Um, personally, I would never prescribe a ketogenic diet for athletes, but I do have some clients that um, do that. They can sustain it. They're healthy. They're fit, um, and it works for their lives. Great. Um, I coach a couple vegan. I coach a couple vegan strong women. What? Vegan you strong women? You can't do that. What? Yeah, I know it's crazy, right? Uh, it actually you can. It's it's hard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like to get complete protein, protein sources. Yeah, yeah. Um, to get you know you, you lack a lot of micronutrients, so you know getting proper B vitamins and creatine and all of these sorts of things. Um, we gotta get strategic and then supplements look a little bit different if you're a vegan, but it can totally be done. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what can you sustain? Mm -hmm. And so they can sustain this, it works for them, but everything has a context. So um, more even than, people ask me about macro calculators a lot. Like how do you know how to start your macros? And how I start everybody, listen, all those calculators are really close. Um, let me explain the difference between something. There's a difference between accuracy and precision. Accuracy says, I'm gonna hit the dartboard. Precision says, I'm hitting the bullseye. All of those calculators are accurate. They're gonna get you on the board, um, but you really need a couple weeks of following a set system to realize where you're specifically at. So plug, use a macro calculator, plug it in. It says you need to be at this. Okay, cool. Stick with that for two to three weeks. Observe, again, observe a trend of data. If you need to go up, go up. If you need to go down, go down. Um, but what's more important too is what you've been doing to this point. Now, specifically, a problem I see a lot is I coach a ton of women, and so many women are under eating and overworking. So they'll be going to Orange Theory six days a week, doing Strongman four days a week, and eating some bullshit 1300 calorie diet. If I plug their macros in, let's say they're a 160 pound female, I plug their macros in, and they need to be at 22, 2300 calories, but they've been at 1300, and I just jump them right there, now they're gonna gain a ton of weight. So we need to do a proper reverse diet to get them back up, yeah. and that kind of, you know, tails off what we were talking about earlier about their seasons and there's phases to things and so um, it can seem like nutrition's complex it, it really it really is not that complex uh, especially if you just follow those overarching principles of don't make decisions without trending data and then when you try to solve a problem just solve one thing at a time throw one solution at it. if it doesn't work try something else yeah uh, but you'll get much farther doing that than constantly trying new things jumping from one diet trend to the other um, you got to find something that works for you and stick with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I think if you were to hire a coach and they would try to prescribe that this is the only way, I would be a little bit skeptical, and I'd probably say you probably need to find another coach. Um, kind of just like Anthony had said is we need to find what works best for the individual and what's going to keep them as compliant and adhere to the program to get those uh, desired results that we're looking for. So, you know, I think a lot of people don't like the answer, well, it depends. Um, that's the one that I find giving myself quite often uh, because it really does depend. There's so many nuanced variables with each individual, their lifestyle, you know, what's worked in the past, what hasn't worked, and kind of maybe what their goals are. Uh, so make sure when you are looking for a coach, guys, that they are asking a lot of questions, getting good information, and really trying to put you on the best course of action possible to getting you those results. And, you know, being flexible with an open mind, all right? They need to cater to you, okay, right? Obviously, uh, that's the main point of a coach is to help out the person, but it's not yeah. always that way. And it sounds weird saying that, but that is, you know, often the truth. Uh, so, you know, just wanted to get him on here. He does a lot of coaching with nutrition, a lot of strength programming with athletes. 
we come from a very similar background. We've been through similar courses and certifications. You know, uh, the people that we follow are, are very like-minded. Uh, so if you kind of like what I do, okay, you're gonna really love his stuff. So, you know, that's kind of where I wanna put this video right now and just give you guys some of the basics. I think we covered a, a lot of them. And just like Anthony had said, it really is basic. Um, there obviously are some complexities to it, but you need to start off with the basics first and then attack those complexities as they arise. Uh, so, you know, just want to say thanks, man, for getting on here yeah, and sure. uh, kicking it and giving these guys an awesome uh, foundation of where to start. And if you guys need a coach, okay, obviously reach out to him. All the information is down below. Make sure you're following him on social media. He's an absolute beast when it comes to strongman. Right now, he's taking a year to work on uh, bodybuilding. So you can only imagine how much he's going to learn through that journey and then be able to implement it with his athletes himself, you know, and put the content out there for you guys uh, to listen and learn. So. Thank you so much. Uh, but until then, guys, stay with me, Strength Machine. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.